from Austria and Austrian wine, we are moving now to a place which is more famous for the whiskey. And of course, I'm talking about Scotland. And uh, so I can say we are talking about the UK because Scotland, as you have learned last week, uh, fortunately stayed with us and uh, stayed within the UK. So we will first talk about Scotland. And after that, we will talk about England and Wales. And uh, the company, which is uh, the country country partner in Scotland, is called uh, Strathern Green, and is run by Mark Gaffney, who has been growing up actually in Hong Kong, has been working for many years in Hong Kong. So he is a real old China hand, and he came back a few years ago and has been starting to work now uh, in Scottish tourism and uh, specializing, of course, on the Chinese market. And uh, he has been doing interviews with a number of high-ranking people, uh, for instance, the head of tourism of Scottish Enterprise, uh, Mr. White, and Mr. Hawk, who is the chief executive of the King's Barn Golf Links, because obviously, beside uh, whiskey, golf is the other, or one of the other, one of the other big topics. And he also talked to Mr. Bannerman uh, from a, a knitwear company. So, because uh, we heard in all the presentations before, Chinese uh, tourists love shopping different kinds of Chinese tourists, maybe in different degrees for different things, but basically, of course, shopping is a part of whatever kind of Chinese tourism we, we will talk about. And so uh, we have a uh, video which gives you information about tourism in Scotland, and uh, these three gentlemen I mentioned uh, will share their knowledge and information with you. That's about 24 minutes, and uh, so I hope you will enjoy looking at that and afterwards uh, we will have the opportunity to, to talk to, to Mark live and we will be able to answer some of your questions. So if you do have questions, please send them to us uh, the whole day uh, by, by Twitter, by Facebook, by email. Uh, so let's go over to the north of UK to Scotland. Hello and welcome to the Scotland segment of this global webinar. In our segment, we will provide you with a brief overview of Strathern Green, our company, as well as our beautiful country, and an overview of the Chinese tourism market and how Scotland is working to welcome visitors from this important market. Firstly, please allow me to introduce myself and my company. My name is Mark Gaffney, and I'm the founder and managing director of Strathern Green. The company was set up in 2012 to focus on the opportunity presented by the significant growth of the outbound tourism market in Asia, but particularly in China. Strathern Green operates as a destination management company providing high-end luxury experiences in Scotland for our Chinese clients. Prior to setting up this company, I was based in Hong Kong for over 20 years with significant experience working in China. With this background, we feel we are well qualified to ensure the very best experiences for our discerning clients from China. An important part of our business is to ensure that our partners and service providers in Scotland are well set up to ensure an excellent experience for our customers. And as a result, we chose to partner with Cotri, which is the market leader in providing this service. Scotland has a long-standing and global reputation as being one of the most attractive countries to visit in the world. With its rich history, spectacular scenery and a warm welcome, it has always been a popular destination for tourists from all over the world. In particular, many of the sectors in which Scotland is an acknowledged world-class player, such as golf, whiskey, outdoor pursuits and luxury goods, are things that are growing in popularity among the aspiring and affluent Chinese tourists. The number of Chinese tourists coming to Scotland is growing rapidly year on year, and this is set to continue. Scotland is of course world famous for its golf, and is considered to be the home of golf. The country boasts some of the most famous golf courses in the world, and for many years Scotland has been an absolute must-visit destination for golf enthusiasts around the world. In addition to this great history, Scotland's profile will increase further over the next few years, with a large number of high-profile and prestigious events, such as the Ryder Cup at Glen Eagles, which starts in just two days' time. We will also host the British Open at St Andrews in 2015, the Ladies' Open Championship at Turnbury in the same year, and the British Open again 
at World Truon in 2016. Chinese golfers are an increasingly more common sight on the great links courses of Scotland. And with the rapid rise in popularity of the game in China, we are surely just in the very early stages of Chinese golfers coming to Scotland. Scotland is, of course, the home of whisky, and for many years, tourists with an interest in our national drink have been visiting Scotland to visit our famous distilleries and taste our fine single malts. China has seen a huge increase in the number of whisky drinkers, and there has been a significant increase in the amount of Scotch whisky imported into and consumed in China. As a result, whisky companies in Scotland are making huge investments in their production capabilities, as well as developing new visitor centres in Scotland, with the increase in popularity of the drink in China very much at the forefront of these initiatives. Scotland is also acknowledged as one of the most, of being one of the most scenic countries in the world, with places such as the Isle of Skye being very popular amongst our Chinese visitors. Scotland's reputation in this regard has been enhanced by its presence in major films such as the recent Skyfall, and countless other blockbusters. China and Scotland have enjoyed a very long and successful history of cooperation and trade. The Scottish Government has been working to build up ties and collaboration in many sectors. One of the keys to cementing this relationship is to promote Scotland as a destination of choice for Chinese tourists. There have been significant investments in Scotland by Chinese companies and individuals. Recent examples include the purchase of Blair Coon Castle in Ayrshire and the purchase of the Watermill Hotel in Paisley by Omega Travel. There have also been other significant investments in the luxury goods sector in Scotland. Strathern Green has been working very closely with companies and tourism organisations in Scotland to help educate them and prepare them for the increasing number of Chinese visitors to Scotland. These programmes have been enthusiastically received by the companies in the tourism sector and there are a large number of companies signing up to improve their capabilities. For this webinar, we have interviewed some of the key players in the tourism, golf and retail sectors in Scotland to provide you with an insight into what they have been doing in this regard as well as their future plans. Our interviewees today are Mr Graham White, who is the Head of Tourism at Scottish Enterprise, um, where he is responsible for attracting investment into the tourism sector in Scotland and also for ensuring the companies in the tourism sector in Scotland have the necessary tools and skills for them to grow their businesses. China is a key market in this regard and Graham and his team have been very active. The next interview is with Mr Alan Hogg, who is the Chief Executive at Kings Barnes Golf Links near St Andrews in Scotland. This is one of the top golf courses in the world. Alan and the team at Kings Barnes have been early movers in terms of making sure that Chinese golfers who come to Kings Barnes are well catered for, and he shares some of his experience with us. Finally, the, the final interview is with Mr. Nick Bannerman, who is the Managing Director of Nipwa at Johnson's of Elgin, which is one of Scotland's oldest and most prestigious luxury clothing manufacturers, and is well known all over the world for the quality of its cashmere products. We do hope that you enjoyed, enjoy these interviews. Thank you for listening to our pres presentation and we look forward to seeing you in Scotland in the near future. Thank you. So Scottish Enterprise is Scotland's economic development agency and we're responsible for uh, supporting the development of the Scottish economy through working with businesses either individually or on a one-to-one -one basis and uh, encouraging uh, international investors to come to Scotland and set up manufacturing or service businesses here. But we're very lucky in Scotland. We've got a a real mixed tourism economy. Uh, we've got everything from centuries old castles, uh, lochs and mountains, we've got an enormous coastline and then we've got exciting city centres uh, with, with uh, all the excitement of festivals and events through, throughout the year. Uh, we've got a very healthy environment here, clean air, clean water. Uh, and of course we have world famous food and drink products including mm -hmm. Scottish salmon and whisky and we are, are the inventors of the game of golf and uh, we have over 700 golf courses in Scotland. 
what we're beginning to see is the growth in uh, in Chinese market, Chinese interest, both as tourists coming to visit Scotland, but also as investors coming to, to look at the opportunities uh, that we have in Scotland. We're very keen to develop our uh, Asian market for, for tourism. And we're doing that by marketing directly into China, uh, attending events, uh, specialist events like golf and food, uh, but also tourism based events to uh, get tour organisers more involved with Scotland and seeing Scotland as a venue. Okay. Uh, and we're doing some work on route development as well in terms of getting people to Scotland. So uh, we've had uh, some recent success with um, uh, Emirates Airlines flying into Glasgow and Etihad and Qatar Airlines flying into, um, into Edinburgh. And all three of these airlines have direct flights from their, their hub in the Middle East to, 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 uh, to Asia. And as these flights are opening up, we're seeing more Asian visitors on the back of the fact that it's now Easy to it's much easier to get to Scotland. We're a very hospitable na nation, and the people who are, are involved in the hospitality industry in Scotland are very used to to opening their their facilities up for visitors from across the world. But we are aware of the cultural differences that, that there are with with the Chinese visitors and what they what makes them comfortable, and we are undergoing a, a training process with some of the key Scottish tourism providers just now, just to make them aware of, of what they require to put in place to make their Chinese visitors more comfortable while they're here. There's a, an event taking place, a, a visit to Britain, a, a trip to China to make companies uh, more aware of the Chinese market and to put them in touch with uh, tour providers that Visit Scotland is, is leading on for Scotland and uh, we've had a really strong uptake from companies who, who are wanting to go to find out more. And um, we have committed to go to the PGA event in China, the golf event in China, uh, with 12 to 15 Scottish golf companies who are very positive about the opportunities in China. My career has taken me, beginning with the professional golf, I'm a professional golfer to trade. Um, I qualified uh, in Scotland uh, back in the, the late 80s, but um, moved across the water to Germany. Spent 23 years uh, in the golf industry in Germany. Mm -hmm. That took me from coaching the game into managing the game. Um, and I was fortunate to uh, study business in, in Germany and ended up managing uh, golf resorts, uh, including uh, hotels and uh, hotels based on uh, golf resorts. They gave me a really good insight into the requirements of the golfer and uh, foreign tourists. We were dealing uh, generally with German and, and, and Swiss tourists. It gave me the, the um, experience to uh, uh, you know, qualify to come back to Scotland to take on the King's Barnes operation, which is a global uh, operation we have uh, golfers coming from all over the world probably in Scotland terms in St Andrews terms we're pretty young um, we are now in our 14th business year um, the uh, operation started in 1997 uh, with the, the construction but opened for business uh, 17th of July uh, 2000 we were very fortunate to um, be noticed or recognized by Mr Chu, Peniel Chu the uh, group chairman of the Mission Hills group, uh, who visited King's Barnes in 2013. He'd seen our course guide, thought this was great, and um, uh, invited us to his resort in uh, Shenzhen, Guangzhou, in uh, uh, China. And we've created a, a partnership, for instance, then with the Mission Hills uh, group, um, where we can gain experience from what the, what the Chinese visiting golfer requires and then what we can do uh, to help that. And they have many thousands of members uh, uh, just in that uh, one group. But again, it's given us good contacts, tour operator contacts, and we are just trying to, to do our best to um, display our 
uh, welcoming, to, to just to, to open the arms to say, yeah, we are, we are open for business and we would like to uh, embrace the, the Chinese uh, uh, golfer. Uh, what, can, what can we do? What would be required from us to, uh, uh, to help push that forward? Um, so it's all about making contact, speaking with people, and being uh, just basically the attitude to say, let us know what we can do. Because that's what we are trying to do for all our visiting golfers. Um, it's, it starts with communication. The business model is fantastic at King's Barnes, uh, with one statement. This golf course was built for uh, handicapped golfers, tourist golfers, uh, to enjoy, to have fun on. Um, and professionals can play as well. Going back three to five years, we had next to no Chinese visitors. Um, we started to notice Chinese visitors coming about three years ago to King's Barnes. And we, hopefully with the, the small measures that we've taken to embrace new markets, we've experienced this year, 2014, a seven-fold increase in Chinese visitors. The first step that we took um, was to translate our course guide, the yardage book, the, 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 the roadmap on, on the golf course. Uh, working with St Andrews University, we took our course guide translated that into Mandarin so that now our caddies uh, can communicate with the golfer uh, easier and better by showing them this is the hole, this is the distance, this is how far it is to a bunker, uh, etc. Uh, this is the pathway to the next, uh, uh, the next hole, or the, the next tee. This has improved uh, our uh, pace of play and I think it's improved the, uh, the, the, the Chinese uh, enjoyment of the golf course. We translated our, our uh, menu into Mandarin, but we used uh, pictures. So we have a little picture um, a menu card uh, with uh, corresponding numbers to the, to the menu list. Not everybody speaks English in this world. And we've noticed that the, the Chinese customers, um, they, they maybe with slightly limited English language uh, skills, it, they, it was difficult to communicate. Mm -hmm. So we had to find ways to like anyway, you know, to fight, have they enjoyed their experience? What would they like? What would they? What could improve their experience? So we've had to work on our communication skills internally to actually find out what the customer would like from us, how we could embrace that. And uh, I think from our own perspective, we've worked hard over the last year and a half uh, on our communication uh, uh, skills uh, and utensils mm -hmm. to to help them feel welcome. The, the main hurdle that we have to uh, get over is um, how do we integrate the Chinese mentality, travel mentality, into the, the Western booking system. Book a year in advance, pay your deposits, pay the balance eight weeks prior to, to travel. That does not seem to be the Chinese way. Um, so again, we're trying to work with that. What you know? How can how can we? Um, I don't know. Relax our rules, or how can we encourage the the Chinese to uh, commit slightly earlier? Mm -hmm. I think that's the cultural difference, or the main difference that we've uh, uh, encountered. We would like to see a more nationwide embracing of the communication difficulties, because I don't think it helps if just King's Barnes translates its course guide or translates its menu, I think there has to be a basic standard that a lot of the facilities, the marquee facilities or businesses in general that, that would like to work uh, with the, uh, the, the, the potential uh, new market of the, the Chinese, I think that has to be rolled out, that has to be um, a, a minimum requirement to try and help Scotland as a, as a destination and not just that King's Barnes are the only ones that have uh, translated the menu. Uh, so I'd like to see that happen in, in the future and I think Visit Scotland are, are working hard on educating the other businesses of this is what you maybe have to do to try and embrace this uh, massive uh, market.
I'm the managing director of the, the knitwear uh, division here in the South Scottish Borders. We also have a woven division uh, in Elgin in the north of Scotland where I sit on the main board. And I'm responsible for the, the global sales uh, teams and we have offices in um, London, in New York, in Tokyo and Dusseldorf. Um, and Johnson's is the largest Scottish textile manufacturer specialising in cashmere. Uh, we're family owned, we've been established since 1797, only ever owned by two families. Uh, and the, the current family uh, took over from the Johnsons uh, in 1920s. Uh, and they're very fiercely proud of being a family company and we invest in the communities in which we sit. We employ 800 people in Scottish textiles. Um, we're a vertical company in that we source all our cashmere fibre from China and Mongolia ourselves and then we will dye that and spin it and we even knit it into the finished product. So you're really going from the cashmere goat to the, to the final product which uh, nobody else is doing uh, in the industry at this time. Uh, and Johnson started in 1797 with Alexander Johnson uh, and was involved in uh, high-end fibres. actually started with Vicuna initially uh, and it was in 1851 was the first Scottish company to start working with cashmere when a Scottish traveller came back from the Far East and had part of the trading he'd done he had acquired a bundle of cashmere uh, and we then bought that and, and worked with it and displayed that at uh, the uh, Great Exhibition in London. And from then we started exporting to, to various markets around the world and now we export to every continent um, with customers, uh, the high end of, of luxury and couture in the main, which is where we tend to, to be. Uh, and Johnson's evolved um, through two or three generations into the 1920s when um, the Harrison family who worked in the business took the business over from the Johnson's when there was no, no other um, children left to, to inherit. So the Harrison family now own the business. Um, they are heavily involved in the business uh, and are very keen for the, for the business just to keep going as a family business for generations to come. Um, they're very much about investing in the communities. They invest a lot in people and in machinery. So we have the, the latest technology in terms of machinery, but also it's the, the hand skills of the people involved that are vital uh, to this industry and especially to Johnson. So we have generations uh, of the same family working in, in the mills uh, and as I said, with 800 staff, it's quite a responsibility for the family uh, and they see that as, a, as something that they, they take, uh, they don't take lightly. They're very keen to uh, keep growing uh, and you know, when we look at China, for example, that's one of the markets that we see a potentially large growth in. Um, but I say we, we deal with all the Parisian couture houses, um, basically the vast majority of major luxury brands you could talk about in the world today um, buy product from Johnson's. And obviously, alongside doing this private label work, we have our own Johnson's brand uh, and that we're looking to expand that, both with uh, uh, our friends from, uh, from China coming to, to Scotland to, to buy from our, our factories and our visitor centres here, but also for us to sell into the Chinese market. Um, we made uh, cloth for Prince Charles for many years, like the jacket I'm wearing at the minute, a, a cashmere cloth, but also woolen cloth. And having his royal warrant was a tremendous seal of approval of quality. So having that here, um, we decided we would also build a visitor centre. And indeed, the visitor centre was opened by uh, the, the, the Prince of Wales himself with uh, Camilla uh, two, two years ago now. Uh, and we're delighted to say it has a five-star visitor attraction um, from Visit Scotland, as does our visitor centre in Elgin. So what we're trying to do here is show the old and the new, the history, some of the machinery we've had in the past, along with the new modern machinery. You come in, we have uh, a video about the company, which is shown in all languages, in, including Mandarin. Then you go on a tour of the factory, which is basically within the building we currently sit, see the actual product getting made right through from the initial cashmere yarn right through to the finished product. And then we have a, a restaurant on site also where people can then relax uh, and enjoy some uh, lovely Scottish food and drink um, before making their cashmere purchases in the shop. And it, it's really tying in to show people both local but from overseas that product is still made in Scotland uh, and we're very proud of that. Uh, and I think having a five-star visitor attraction uh, set really um, cements the, the, the idea that we had initially to build a second visitor centre. Um, so in between that we also have a shop in St Andrews, although that doesn't have the, uh, a cafe facility, it also has uh, the maximum number of stars for a visitor attraction. So we have three uh, opportunities for people to come and visit us, but to actually see the factories working in Elgin and in Hoyk it is a fascinating, uh, a fascinating site uh, and a very informative and a very intimate uh, type of tour where you get your own personal guide for small groups to go around the factory. We find that, um, as an example, that the people that go on, on our factory tours are much more engaged with the whole 
the business and the product than those who just come into the shop and you know perhaps don't quite realize it's it's made here going through the factory and actually seeing every process they're made of hand skills for example of 50 different processes that the product will go through before we produce a cashmere sweater here and to actually see somebody hand sewing um, parts of the garments to see all the skills that have gone in and the chance to speak to some of the operatives as well and our, our staff here who are working and have been working for 20, 30, 40 years here uh, allows them to just get that buy into the product. You'll also see people working on any of the Parisian couture houses you, you wish to mention uh, working on that type of product within this factory so you can see that, that dealing with that luxury end of the market and people like Burberry for example, one of our, uh, we're one of the biggest suppliers to to Burberry, that is hugely important so people can see that and realise that the product they're buying from Johnson's is made in exactly the same fashion. In terms of enhancing the experience for, for our Chinese visitors, we do have the, the DVD in Mandarin and we will be investing in, uh, for example, in our, in our cafes and restaurants of having uh, Mandarin menus, in having um, much more explanation of uh, the processes involved, the people who are going to meet and greet because it's something I, th I think we realise in Scotland that we have to do. Um, we're very different cultures, but I think very welcoming. And you'll, you'll find for all people who come to see us from whatever nationality, that we're a very welcoming nation. Uh, and that we're very keen to show people the skills we have and what we do. Um, so that's something that we'll definitely be working on, uh, are working on at the minute and will continue to do so.